Министре, добре дојдовте во Република ТВ, ова е ново интервју за првпат со вас, добре дојдовте во ова издание на интервјуа на Република Телевизија. Како министер за привлекување на странски инвестиции, дојдовте како нов член од одборот на директори на Македонија 2025. А по потекло сте македонец, во делувањето, работењето сте американец како експерт за менеджмент со богато бизнис портфолио во реномирани компании, па како ги оценувате условите за водење бизнис во Македонија? As a Macedonian born in America with successful and diverse business experience, I can honestly say that the business climate in Macedonia is excellent. In fact, I think I can say Macedonia is the most competitive pro-business country in all of Europe. We have tremendous advantages, such as lowest operating cost in Europe, unbeatable low taxes, very strong financial incentives, available in a very talented workforce, a great logistical location that gives us free trade access, to all of Europe, Turkey and Ukraine, about 700 million people, between 650 and 700 million. We have government guarantees that have prudent fiscal policies and that helps investors feel secure about investing in Macedonia. Furthermore, we, I think we have the most aggressive strategy and dedicated strategy to win foreign investments from our local or regional competitors in the region and that helps going to help us create even more jobs for Macedonians. To validate this, the World Bank has found Macedonia to be the, the number five place, the fifth place in the world to start a business and number one in Europe. Колку американските компании се заинтересирани за инвестирање во Европа, односно во Македонија, бе, ги гледаме сведоци сме на навлегување на автомобилската индустрија. А, колку е полесно да се а, оствари контакт сега со, со нови компании, со нови инвеститори, а, сега кога веќе неколку светски реномирани компании веќе се а, тука присутни во Македонија, кога веќе инвестирале. А, ова ве прашувам како експерт нели за а, управување со ризик што е и ваш сектор. American companies have always invested in Europe and now some of them, some of these American companies are now utilizing Macedonia's superior advantages to use Macedonia to launch or expand into into Europe and that's going to make them more competitive. And I think after 7 years of very intense economic promotion of Macedonia in the United States has led to more Americans interested in doing business here in Macedonia. The toughest test always with American business decision makers is you have to prove to them that by doing business in Macedonia, their company, will their company grow faster and it will improve their profit margins. I think when this is accomplished and when we can convince them of that, I am very confident there will be many more American companies that are, will invest and do business in Macedonia. We already have proof of this. We have proof with companies like Johnson Controls, Kemen Electronics and Alliance One. Macedonia also in the automobile industry has many uh, automobile component manufacturers like Johnson Controls, as I mentioned, and Kemen Electronics from America. But we have from the United Kingdom, we have Johnson Matthey, Draxel Meyer from Germany, Van Hool from Belgium, Technohost from Italy. So we have huge automobile component manufacturers from the top countries around the world. So it shows that we have uh, experience in this industry. And that helps us to attract any kind of manufacturing. And I'm focused on any kind of manufacturing, not just automobile related. It's impressive to know that if you think about it, Johnson Controls has opened a second factory here in just a few years after its initial investment. This is really unbelievable. And from my experience and my previous experience as a risk manager, due diligence and risk assessment are crucial when you look at any project. So it's very comforting when you're talking to a, a potential investor that they can see there have already been huge manufacturers that have already successfully invested in Macedonia, let alone built their second factory. At the moment, right now, there are many more American companies very interested in Macedonia. And they're in the decision process stage. They're visiting, they're thinking about making a decision, and we're trying to push them along in, in, that, in, that, in that way. So this is very valuable evidence that Macedonia is doing something right and moving in the right direction for investors. Кампањата инвестирајте во Македонија ја има поддршката од CNN, ја има поддршката од Forbes и од други реномирани институции. Колку се тие релевантни за американскиот бизнис пазар? CNN and Forbes and other major institutions like that are very important to increase the global awareness of Macedonia and to show how competitive and business friendly Macedonia has become. 
specifically in America, you, you must have, you have to have these promotional campaigns, and they need to be done by the, the largest media, uh, business media giants in the industry. And that will enhance our credibility. It'll make our efforts um, easier to contact these companies about doing business and investing from America into Macedonia. As I've experienced my whole life growing up in America, and believe me, it's been a problem for anyone in the diaspora, nobody really knows. A very small percentage of people actually know where Macedonia is. This is a real challenge, and it doesn't matter if it's someone from your neighborhood or it's a CEO of a Fortune 500 company. Most of them don't know much about Macedonia, let alone where we are. So it's extremely important that we work very hard to get our message out to the right companies in the right markets. This is why we've already started a very extensive, right now, a very extensive multi-targeted promotional and marketing campaign. And at the same time, we're hosting more and more foreign companies here in Macedonia that are in that decision process stage to come and see Macedonia and to talk to these companies for themselves. So based on this very strong and focused activity and with the, with the awareness created by, created by CNN, by Forbes and other institutions like this, I think we should, can expect much higher investments in 2000 or more investments in 2014. Macedonian diaspora, the United States It's a very interesting question and for me coming from the diaspora in the United States and now being on this side, um, I think I can answer fairly and honestly. And yes, I think the, the diaspora in the United States, you know, they are investing in Macedonia and they are pointing others to invest here. It appears they're not investing fast enough and it can never be fast enough, but it will increase significantly when we have success stories of our people from the diaspora who have invested safely here and they can feel secure. Right now, at the moment, I'm in negotiations with several extremely talented people from our diaspora in the United States in the process of bringing very exciting new and, um, and major investments here. Other Macedonians in the United States, they know they can trust me, and they know that, um, uh, and at the same time, I'm encouraging them to open up doors for me to, to meet potential investors, and I'm pushing very hard, okay? You love Macedonia, you know me, let me talk to your, to your companies, to your clients. They know that I'll pursue their business contacts very professionally, and I won't let them down. And so I think with this effort, we're going to generate um, some new investment projects. I guess I see myself as a, as a vital link between our two communities. In addition, the diaspora is starting to appreciate and recognize the pro-business policies of the government. How, how can you not when you, when you see these awards we've, or these rankings we've received? It, it will help improve their perception of Macedonia because sometimes they're thinking of things that have happened in the past. But when they see the positive reports from the World Bank, from CNN, from PricewaterhouseCoopers, and Forbes, and many others, um, it's got to help uh, improve that perception, and therefore, uh, we'll keep pushing to bring their investments here. Кога разговарате со странските инвеститори, им нудите ниски даноци и сите поволности кои што ги нуди државата. Меѓутоа, има ли да се истакнеме со капацитет и на работници со знаење и со искуство. I, I think I think that the Macedonians that are coming out of college are better educated on average than what there is in America. I think what's lacking here is the the work experience. So many of them haven't had an experience in high school or college to work and so that's a new experience for them that maybe in many times in America um, the, the people that have graduated from college many of them have had work experience and um, maybe that's a difference, but I, I think, I, I think that our our student, our graduates, I think they're smarter, and I think they're hungrier for work. They know that there's high unemployment, and there's not much chance to get work at the moment, and so they really want a job, and when they get a job, they really want to keep it. And I think American um, kids have taken that for granted because it, it's been so much easier in the past. Mm -hmm. As soon as you get a degree, it's not are you going to have a job? Which job are you going to have? So when, when I'm making the presentation, after we talk about the low cost, mm -hmm. the low wages, the low taxes, and the low operating cost, I go right into um, a, a section of my conversation is, what good is low cost if you have low quality? Because you can go to Bangladesh or Zimbabwe and get even lower cost. 
what type of quality will you have with that workforce? And I said, this is what makes Macedonia different. We have low cost, and really I would rather call it competitive cost, because if I say low cost, there's always someone lower. If I say competitive, it, it means it's, it's competitive, it may not be the lowest. But when you compare that to the educational level and the, and the, uh, the intelligence level of that worker that we have in Macedonia, there's no comparison. And if you now take that educational level, available worker, low cost, and you add to that our language skills, the fact that all of these young people speak proficient English, and English is, if, if we're talking about foreign investments, we're talking about international business. The language of international business is English. So when you put all that together, I say we have the, uh, one of the most superior workforces in the world. Low cost, we, they're available, they're educated, and they speak great English on top of several other languages uh, in Europe, and of course many of the local regional languages in the Balkans. And so when you put all that together, I think we have, that's our strongest asset. Kako što rekao, vi ste roden Amerikanec, očigledno imate poteškoti со македонскиот јазик, но јазикот на бизнисот го владеете, би рекол, еве, совршено, еден мал комплимент. Па и вашата работа е насочена кон надвор. Па како реагираат американските бизнисмени кога очекуваат македонец министер да дојде, а доаѓа Американец? Да, разбијам. <laughs> it's true. You know, I grew up speaking a very mix of broken English and broken Macedonian, so my language skills are not my top asset. It's true. I don't have. Um, I, I'm not. My Macedonian language skills aren't as good as they should be, but uh, I'm working on them, and and I want them to be better. Um, part of the problem is since I've been here, many Macedonians speak such, especially the young people. They speak, and my team and my staff, they speak such excellent uh, English. They're. They're speaking to me in English all the time. So, um, but in my travels representing Macedonia around the world, it doesn't matter where I've been all over the world already. I've been to India, China, Italy, France, United States. Um, everybody speaks English, and that's the language of the international business world. So I don't have any problem in explaining why Macedonia is a brilliant place to do business. When I specifically go to America and I deal with American businesses, having grown up in America and having uh, had business and as an executive and a business owner in America, I think this is a great asset for me because they know they can relate to me and I can relate to them. I know exactly what these companies, whether they're small and fast growing, mid-size or large, I know what they're going through this present economic crisis and that um, the government is strangling American uh, business owners and executives uh, strangling their profits. Because I've worked for all types of uh, companies early in my career at executive levels and I founded several of my own businesses uh, in America, the American businessmen know that I and them, we speak the same language. And I don't mean English, I mean the universal language of smart business. Malko i lično za vas. Vi jeste voženet i imate šest deca. I'm sorry. Koliko semenite vrednosti i mnogodetnite semestva se ceneti vo biznis svetot? Kako među rakovodnite kadri, tako i po među robotnicite? In America, it's business life and home life and family life are kept completely separate. Sometimes I don't think they even care at all. And it's kept separate by the great majority of the people. And therefore, family values, in my opinion, are not appreciated by most business people in America. Most Americans don't have large families, and there are cultural and social changes occurring whereby many children today are being born into families without fathers in the home. My family is very important to me, and my wife and I agree that, that children are a gift from God. And Macedonia has a beautiful tradition of family values, and I hope that we maintain those family values in the future. Thank you.